good day. Uh, long time no see. Um, I think it's been almost a year. Well, no, it could actually be over a year since I last uh, recorded an always developing uh, show. Um, it's been busy. But uh, I have, during that time, uh, been working on Snippet Pixie, which is now renamed to Snippet Expander, um, on and off, here and there. Um, and just yesterday, last night, in fact, very early this morning, um, I decided to tag uh, release version 1.0 um, with a very shortly after a version 1.01, uh, which I'll chat about in a minute. Um, so I thought I'd give a quick demo of what Snippet Expander is about. Um, and then maybe try and package it up for next packages and uh, see if I can get through that um, and get it uh, submitted. Um, but yeah, so I thought, see as a, we have a 1.0 stroke 1.01, um, I should probably do a video to celebrate. Um, so what have we got? Um, so it has a new website. It's uh, snippetexpander.org. You can see just a basic site uh, with some information as to what it's all about. Um, talking about how you can auto expand snippets, um, how you have a search and paste window for when auto expansion doesn't work. Um, and the fact that with Snippet Expander, uh, we both have a GUI and a CLI um, that are pretty much feature um, comparable. Um, lost my words there. Um, and of course that they've got placeholders and settings and you can import and export. Um, there's a little bit at the bottom to explain, well, hardly explain, but say, hey, Snippet Pixie um, is still out there in a kind of archive format. Um, so if you really need that, you can go get it from the Snapcraft store, next package is still. And of course it has its own GitHub um, as well. Um, in this new site, uh, we have docs, which is actually just the manual pages. Um, I've just basically made sure that they get rebuilt um, and put into the site whenever they change. Um, so they, they'll always be up to date. And it saves me having to duplicate effort by rewriting everything for the website. Um, I'm trying to keep everything manageable and maintainable because I just don't really have a great deal of time for this. And I'd rather work on the software than on things like um, the website. So for the CLI, for example, you have all the um, options and commands here and just, to, you know, it's based, a basic man page with some notes as to how to um, use snippet expander. Um, and then also the, we've got the placeholders manual page as well. It explains about date and time and clipboard snippet and cursor placeholders, which are quite handy stuff. Um, and then of course, with this new setup, we have a daemon, uh, which does all the heavy lifting for snippet expander. It's sitting there behind the scenes, doing all the work of managing the snippets um, and doing the, uh, the pasting as well, if you do if you want to do the, the search and paste window. Um, so that's there, very basic info on that. Um, and then of course we've got the GUI, which doesn't need a lot of chat. Um, it's all very obvious, I think. And then we also have a separate daemon for the actual expansion handling now. Um, so this is, had, I had to write this in Vala to make sure all the bindings worked for doing the ATSPI um stuff so that's got its own little daemon and a little bit of a man page for that as well so if you're looking for that kind of stuff and of course there's a link um to the source code uh, which is on source hut and um, you can see here a few hours ago um, about four in the morning i did the final thing it was a late night um i couldn't sleep uh, so i finished it all off 
Um, and it's now got an updated README with all the bits and bobs that go with that, um, including the fact that you can, there is a mailing list, an IRC, um, and the license is uh, GPL v2. Um, shall we do a quick demo? I suppose we sh probably should. Um, let's see. Um, I will show. So snippet expand itself, the actual main page uh, app is very simple now. It doesn't have the snippet pixies, previous list of snippets, and then a form you know, to see the stuff. Most people, from what when I was talking to them, no, they use this for um, going in and checking stuff. They never really, it was a little bit awkward um, not seeing what each abbreviation meant straight off. Whereas with this little summary, um, it works quite well. So you can search for stuff. So I can search for Ian here and here's all the stuff that's um, got my name in it somewhere. Um, there's still, I don't think I've got everything in here. Yeah, so I need to copy in some from my laptop that I know I've been working on. So I think I've got, I'm pretty sure I've got an export in my inbox. So what I'll do, I'll go into the settings and I will use the import. So before I do that, you can obviously start um, the, the daemon behind the scenes automatically um, when you log in. It just uses a desktop file. Uh, this is Linux. Um, it puts it in the right place so that when you log in with any usual desktop or if you set it up with, um, I have something I think called DEX or something that just runs all the desktop files. Um, it just sets that up. Um, you can also um, make sure the auto expander is, up, is running. You don't have to use it. Some people don't ever use it. You might as well turn it off in that case. Um, in some desktop environments, uh, we can automatically create the shortcut for the search and paste window. Um, I can't in i3. It doesn't quite work. Um, so it just says, hey, can't do it. Um, it's detected that it doesn't have the facilities. Um, but I have set it up manually. Um, uh, and... When you're doing the search and paste, you can decide whether you want um, to focus the search box or the actual list when you open it up. Some people are using the same few over and over again, so they just hit a, a shortcut. I'll show that in a minute um, and don't need to search. But other people search, tab, use. Uh, import and export. I'm going to use this now to import uh, let's see, I sent down there, no, must be an inbox, yeah. This, there we go. It's created a couple. I'm pretty sure now I should have SER, yeah. So, for example, this is a basic snippet that's shown on the website. Um, so I can do SER, backtick. That's my preferred way of making sure that my abbreviation is easy to recognize um, using a back tick at the end. Uh, and then it will expand to snip expand. Um, and you can obviously remove, uh, cancel, or save any changes there. Hit an escape, gets you back out. Um, what else have we got? It's easy to add. You can either hit the button or just uh, Shortcuts such as Control N. Um, there's a few. I think Control is it Control Shift S? No, can't remember now. Oh yeah, Control Alt S. That seems to be a fairly regular thing uh, for doing settings. Um, and then of course there's an, uh, an info like an about page. Just some basic info there. Links to the uh, the website, stuff like that. So that's all it is really. It's pretty easy to manage um, your snippets. Uh, you can click in S3. Oh, I wanted to put three. There we go. Save, done. And you can see it's there. An abbreviation just 
summarizes it. If it's long, you're not going to see it all. And of course, you can just click as well as um, use. So you can scroll. Uh, you can go to the end, top. You can go page down to see stuff. Um, usual stuff and it has vim keys as well so i can do um up and down uh, and that kind of stuff and g to the top shift g to the bottom things like that this has all been shown while i was developing um the app uh, in previous videos so i'm gonna just close that now um, and I will use Auto Expander. So go into LibreOffice. Uh, so now I can type SER backtick and I get Snippet Expander rules, which is pretty cool. Uh, I've got things like that. Now I can do SEU backtick for the um, URL. It's quite handy for your longer URLs if you have a list of them and want to keep on pasting them out. Um, I have things like, um, we used to always have people trying to do, uh, you know, ask for support on, you know, GitHub repos that shouldn't have support. So I'd have like light support. It gives me a, a whole spiel on the plugin that I use, I, I work on for WordPress. Various other things, so it's quite handy. Um, and you can just do today's date and stuff like that. I've just put that in. Um, so if you look at the snippet for that, it's just, just a placeholder with the date. Uh, the percent X is just saying, just give me the short form date. Um, whereas if you look at DT calc, you can see that there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can do all kinds of formats you can do next year by saying, okay. Give me a date with plus one year and give me it in the normal format, that kind of stuff. So, um, and you can do other calculations and different formats. Um, so if I come out here, do TT calc. And then there's things like you have, uh, I think I've snip test. Yeah, whole bunch of snippets embedded in snippets. So you can build a bunch of snippets. It can only go to level three though. So you don't get forever recursion and things like that. Um, but yeah, so you can use dollar dollar at and snippet and then give it the, uh, the snippet name. So that's auto expansion. Um, and that's using the snippet expander X daemon in the background, monitoring apps that are accessible. Um, but of course, sometimes they're not. Um, so I'll just come out there. If you're on um, a web browser, uh, it's often the case that you can't use an auto expander. Um, so let's see. Um, if I go in here, if I do SER backtick, it's not ex expanding. But what I could do is bring up the search and paste window. And for that, I've got um, mod backtick. That's my thing. So some people call their Windows key. Um, and you can see that there I've got so as first op option. So I can just click in, I can just um, tab into the uh, list and hit return and then it expands it or I could do uh, say I want that second one there no let's do three do the date calc if I now hit three it then expands all that into that as well so you see it's all expanded let's get rid of that um, if if you're someone who wants to use those shortcut keys very quickly, because you're always going to be using, say, the first few, um, I can change that. 
in Snippet Expander so that we don't focus the search box uh, when we're using the search and paste. So now when I bring it up, it's straight into the list. So now I can just do two when we're done, uh, which is pretty quick and handy. Um, if you are doing that and you're like, oh, actually, no, I do need to search. Just do a shift tab and it takes you back into the search. I think it's you can do a control S as well. Or is it control F? Control F. Yeah, I don't use it often, so I don't know these shortcut keys because um, I'm usually just tab don't done. Um, but yeah, and then you could obviously just do stuff like that. Uh, there's lots of them there. Lots of snippets. Uh, that's down to zero, but then there's a bunch more that aren't going to get shortcut key here. And that's the basics. Um, pretty quick and simple, easy to use. Create a bunch of snippets. Use the short, um, the actual abbreviations. If you can't remember them, use the uh, search and paste window. So that's it. It's up and running. Uh, as you can see from this to-do list, there's a couple of things I need to do. Um, I want to package for Nix. I think I will package for Debian. Um, that I don't know how to do that yet. Um, I'm way more familiar with Nix. So that will be a later thing, research. Probably just be a case of make some Debs and then see whether it's worth trying to get it into Debian. Um, but if I at least get to the point where I have a recipe for making .debs, that'd be great. I have found that occasionally um, the auto expander um, tries to work when you paste something that has um, that ends as a like an abbreviation, or at least it looks a bit, and that can sometimes cause issues. So I'm going to need to look into that later on. Um, and then, as you might have seen, the snippet expander window and the search and paste window, they always use the same size uh, when they come up. Um, I need to change that. I need to actually save setting for that. And um, so whatever. So that's going to be probably one of the first things I tackle because it, it does get a little bit annoying not being able to resize it to your liking and make sure it comes up in the same place each time. So there are a few things I'm going to do. Um, but first off, I want to do the next package. Um, so, uh, let's see, we have, I have my own fork, which looks to be out of date. Let's get that refresh. God, it's been 16 already since I last looked at this. It's quick. Okay, let's sync that. So that's up to date now. And now I've got to work out how I'm going to package it because it is multiple items. Uh, we've got four, four binaries, but they don't all have to be there. So the daemon has to be there. So that is like the one thing that the other three depend on. Um, you then have the snippet expander X, which is uh, for auto expansion. Some people might want to use it, some might not. Um, then you have, do you want to use the CLI? Um, it's not required. Um, most people will like it for a quick and easy check-in that it's working. Um, but you don't need it. Um, and then the GUI, which I would argue is probably one of the most important pieces. People tend to be more visual with these things. It's easier to manage snippets through the GUI than the CLI, even though... Oh, I've never really demoed that. Quick demo of CLI. So you can do snippet expand uh, list. And here's all the snippets. Um, I can do snippet expand uh, 
Oh, there's a few things. So I could do this. I could do ping, which just returns pong. That tells me that the daemon is up and running. But if I were to do snippet expander stop, try ping again, daemon's not running. So I can now start it via the CLI. Um, and it also do things like do snippet expander auto expand. It's on. I can also say, ah, oh, actually I'll turn that box. So when I look at it, it says now it's off now. And then I can also turn it back on as well. Things like that. So you can do quickly change things here. You can, um, so if I look at what's in my clipboard, uh, I'll have to be careful here because I don't know what I've pasted recently. Oh, nothing. That's good. Cool. Uh, so what I could, could do is snippet expander uh, expand and then I could do ser backtick. So if you were doing some scripting and you knew you had all these things that you wanted to like automate in like today's date plus some text and all this kind of stuff and you can be bothered actually just scripting it with date and stuff like that or, or you wanted to mung a bunch of snippets together or something like that you could use expand um, and that will return it there you go um, but I don't think it puts it in the, in the in the clipboard but if you were just like oh i just need to grab this uh, for the clipboard but don't want to paste it um you can do snippet expand oh snippet copy uh, so you don't get any re response there but now it's in my pasteboard so i can paste it if i want to uh, which is quite handy sometimes when you want to just move around uh, the cli or stuff like that so various things you can do um, obviously you can add and edit and um, so add and delete snippets one thing i haven't actually gone there is edit and um, that might be something to do in the future I keep forgetting about that but you can use a GUI for that or you can just um, override and delete add okay let's try packaging this for next packaging packages I've just about got time I think to have a go at that so right we have updated my fork of next packages and I will make sure I am now which one is that that's the one so let's get it up to date here on my machine put it down okay now we do already have snippet pixie um in there um, and that's in the old format of, so uh, let me find it. Yeah, package tools text. So it's in a category, but I believe, is it in packages? by name yeah it's kind of switched to a new format where you use the first two characters of your package's name and put it in there um, so previously I packaged up um, uh, SCD to HTML you can see that there. And so it's got this 
slightly different format, whereas the package.nix um, Um, so it's a usual sort of, um, you're still using a uh, make der derivation and all that kind of stuff. Um, but it's just in this different directory structure um, and the file's called package.nix instead of the old, which is called default.nix. Um, I'm thinking that I'm just going to create a single PR with all four binaries in it, each as a single package. But of course, three of them will depend uh, on this snippet pixie, uh, snippet expander D, the daemon. And we'll see how that goes. Because otherwise, if you wanted to just use the GUI, I think you would then have to say, OK, I want this sub package of this or the whole lot, um, which seems a little bit OTT when all you really want is the dependencies for just the GUI and the daemon. Um, you might not want to pull in the whole shebang for um, the expander which requires all the ATSPI stuff and stuff like that. So um, and the GTK stuff, well, that's in the GUI anyway. But if you just want to see a lie, you can make it really, really light. Yeah, I'm going to do that. So where are we? Do we have an S? P, well, what would we, we've got SN we want. No, there's an SN, but no SN. So I'll be making that. Okay. All right. Um, so make dar snippet expander d cli is just called snippet expander. We want x for the auto expander, and we want the GUI as well. So that's four. I think that will do us. Um, let's see if we can get the daemon working first. The good thing about um, doing it this way, I believe you don't need to update all packages. Or do you? Hmm. Let me just double check that. No, I think we're good. Hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah, good. Yeah. I vaguely remembered not having to build that. Okay. So I've expanded D. Now comes the fun bit. Actually putting the thing together. So I have an overlay. So when you saw me using Snippet Expander earlier, um, that's because I've been building against tagged versions. And obviously since I've tagged 1.01, um, I've been building an overlay in Nix OS um, for that. So I could probably steal that and make some changes to make it a package. Uh, so yeah, let's take them. dot nix and now we need to really change it up oh, okay shall I up I'm gonna update those neo vim dependencies oh, wait, come on. we'll do that because that's gonna annoy me every time I open up something in a minute Okay, let's make sure it still works. All right, we're good. Okay, so this is an overlay and I need to now switch it up. Um, and I'm going to remember. Let's see. Um, Let's um, right, we'll open that up as well, and we'll use that. As a, okay, it's pretty much as I expected. just need to create the function I'm going to need I'm probably going to need these things already that's probably actually close to this a good starter so I'll take take that Uh, do, do, do. So that's a wrapper around it, and then it's the project name. Slightly different. Don't need snip expanded D there. Okay. All right. So let's do that. Probably going to be standard env, I'm guessing.
and then we're going to have that's going to be pulled in anyway. That should be good because I've just built it. That should be good. Step expander version tagging is working there. I'll do a clean up in a minute. Proxy vendor true mod root. That's right. So native build inputs. They're going to be dependencies. Let's check them up here for a moment. Well, so that's already let's keep them in order there. So we've got lib standard name fetch from source hut. Then we're going to say, OK, native build inputs are package, config, make wrapper, se doc, install shell files, which is used just for the man pages. Um, and we can do that. For the build inputs, for the daemon we need X11 because of their copy and paste. And GTK3 for the accessibility stuff that comes along with that. To, um, and the dbus. So that comes in as well. The dependency. Okay. And uh, we have LD flags. We want it stripped. And then we get to post install. We want the man page and the placeholders man page come along with that. So that's available to any any version because it's coming with a daemon. Then the post fix up. Right. Get rid of the super bits. Hopefully that will work. And now this. Hopefully I'll kind of preset this OK. So description, your little expandable, expandable text snippet helper daemon. Home page is correct, license is correct, maintainer will be me. And platforms is only for Linux, that's all it works on now. For sure. Maybe one day we'll do something else, but I wouldn't hold your breath. Right, so that is.
that. So presumably I need to get rid of that. And I guess I don't need that last semicolon. Right. Let me just check. That was the wrong thing there. I meant to do it that. <laughs> right. Source. Don't know about that enable parallel building. This is a very different build here. Let's see. But we'll see. Ha uh ha. -huh. Okay. Main program. I guess I could use that. Don't know why. But I'm psh, I presume it doesn't harm. Okay. Now I'm just gonna reformat that, see what happens. Is it correct? I think it is. think that might work. Right, let's give it a go. So we're in the root. Okay. So I should be able to do uh, next build. Minus A snippet expander D. And we'll see what happens. Ooh. Okay. I don't like something I drink, but uh, wouldn't be past. Understand that one, so let's have a quick look. Um,
do. Let's pick one. Uh, do, do, do. Anything I recognize? Maybe Badger? Let's try that. And we'll do... That's very similar. Ah. Oh no, I did that. Ah, oh, standard env. Don't need standard env. We have P name and version. We have source. Vendor char. Oh, they're using vendor hash. Hash. That's presumably the new version, the new. Let's do that. It's a little bit neater because we've already got the, the type in the string. I'll pick that up. Sub packages. I'm using mod root for that because it does need to go in and build it. Uh, do check false, no reply. Okay. Why is that not? Do they not have proxy vendor? Don't know why, but I always use that. What else we got? Ah. I'm guessing No, I do need that. Right, so all I've changed there is the vendor. Oh, build game module, of course. Oh. <laughs> That's probably what it was. Okay. Hmm. Try 
כן. These are not helpful error messages. I don't know what that is. Actually, do I need that? Okay, makes no difference. I've probably got a very basic thing wrong here and I have no idea because this makes no sense okay lib function args function args f internal call by name package file Because the point of the code didn't blow there, can we change to not allow definitions in all packages to override ones from package? Uh, I am stuck. I might have to finish this off some other time. Let's have a quick look. Um, what could it possibly be? Hmm. Got all the stuff there. Turn lib.
This is another package I maintain for Wales. So that's all using lib, so that's fine. That's all I was expected there. Can't see any issue there. Can't see anything. Obviously wrong. Make wrapper. Hmm. Crap is there. Loop, standard M, build go. Package config. Make wrapper. Other bits and bobs. It is funny that it's not colouring this correct. Why is that? Because if you look at this, why is that? Got the strings and that has not. Why is that different? I missed something. Oh, uh, what if? What if it's that? No? I'm obviously missing something simple here as to why it's not syntax syntactically correct.
and it's just given me rubbish. There it is. It looks all right to me, but No, it wasn't that. Don't know. That's very annoying. I don't know Nick's well enough to be able to decipher that that problem. <laughs> right, that looks okay. No. Scuppered. Okay, so I think that's back to... that. Let's quickly test... I haven't just got a general problem. So SED to HTML, does that build? Yes.
missing? Why is that highlighted correctly? I know. No idea. I mean, I could start trying the other ones, but I have a feeling I'll get the same problem. We'll quickly whip them in um, and see if any of them work. So I'll take do a different thing this time. We'll do the Vada one. the damn right. probably need to do that
stars five. We also need well. Probably yeah. Need that. Stick all those in. See, that's all been highlighted correctly at the moment. Interesting. So what's different? Before, obviously, I can't put in a build input of the Snippet Pixie D yet because it's not building. But that might work. Okay. Oh, I'm in the wrong place.
Now that is definitely complaining about Xorg. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So that's working. What if I change what? I hope it's not just this. That should still work. Okay. Hmm. Now I'm very curious. Hold on a minute. in the wrong place. <laughs> it's re it's named wrong. I missed it's not called Nix. God. I can't believe that. Oh. oh man. Okay, maybe I shouldn't have been tagging things at four o'clock in the morning. Wow. Okay. Right. So we now know that this will break anyway. So we need to do that. Uh, and everything else with luck is okay. Let's go back. Let's build the daemon. Done. Okay. Now that's building really quickly because the hash is something I already have in my system. Um, so we're good. Look at the result. We have a bin and in the bin we have snippet expander D. Uh, if we look, okay, hold on a minute, that's very small. 
Is that right? Yeah, it is. Wow, it is small. It's tiny. Cool. Okay, and... Right, so... We now know it works. So hold on, go back here. We'll go into packages by name. Send. We'll copy. Oops. You never know, might actually get this done today. Dot files, XRS, common, snippet expander, to snippet expander, package dot nix. Ooh. And then, oh, did I already do them? No, GUI as well. Okay. Same again. Clean up pins. Get rid of that. Get rid of super. program well, just an expander on here not gooey then we want this we're gonna need lib I don't know if we need standard env here. No. We're going to need fetch from source hut. We need those two things. I'll just break these in at the moment. And that's that. 
Right. Now. We do need build input here though. We want snippet expanded D. Try this out. I'm not sure how well this is going to work. This might be problematic. Right. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. And rename this to hash. And this to... I think it's vendor hash, wasn't it? Still looks okay. Expand the text snippet CLI. Yeah, okay. I think we're good there. Right. I'm just going to wing it for a minute. Um, actually, no. For X, I want to make sure it's also got snippet expand D. Oops. And that's a build input. as well. That's a, like a runtime thing basically. Got to be around runtime. As opposed to when you actually build build. Um, all right now we want to do the GUI. Okay, top and tail. My program. Take out that. Get rid of super. Start adding stuff. Um, always want lib. Got standard in. Doesn't look like it. Okay. Because uh, it's Wales, um, all that a lot of stuff will come in anyway. Um, okay. So we do now need build go okay, module. We need fetch. Source hub. We need 
these things. We need, I'm going to take them out over here. We've got these four things here as well. Make sure that's only that. The commas. G settings to stop schemas there. GTK3, I think we're good on that. Uh, we just need to add snippet expanded D. Tidy that up. Look. Think we're okay. Let's try these things out then. We are going to do Nix build minus A. We'll just do them all. We'll start with snippet expand D. Theory works. Snippet expander. See what happens now. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Missed an equals there. Again. Hmm. Build go module. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. There it is. And that's about the size I expect. There's man pages. Yep, and one. 
time. Yeah, it's zipped it up. Good stuff. Okay. If I... This should work. There we go. If we go... Yeah, pink should still work because I've got it running anyway. Got the daemon running. Yeah, we're good. Okay. So that is Snip Expander. Let's try x again which hopefully already works okay now it depends on snip expanded d it needs to rebuild so it's done the thing okay that's fine there it is should be able to get the version on that. Can't really do much else with that. Yep, yeah, so that's good. At least that runs. Binary works. That's good. And there should be. Oop. Oh, pony bins. Oh. No man pages. Hmm. Don't know why that is. Hmm. Interesting. Did I not do that? I wonder why. So that's post install, install man page, snippet expander, x1. We saw it get built. Install shell files. Ah. Don't think I added it.
So it's a native build input. Why is that? Not showing up. Double check the others. Snip expander, we saw it happen. Install shell files, build inputs, and check the GUI, I guess. Install shell files, install shell, yeah, okay. It's not happening there. Try just installing that. Mm. Right, that's the old one for the other for the CLI. Okay, something weird there. So that's actually potentially a real problem with the manual page. Um, okay. Yeah, right, we'll build the GUI. Make sure that works. This will take a little while. I need to check notifications. Right. Oops. Yeah. 
I've got both. I wasn't just being blind and not seeing the double thing there, was I? No, it's only the one. It's interesting because that's a completely different setup as well. Because that's the wrap. It's a, a no map. Hmm. Okay, well, I'm running running out of time. I'm not sure I'm going to get this. Um, that's me getting pinged. I think I will. I'll make the branch. I think it's almost ready. I need to give it way more testing before I actually submit it. So I'll do that now. Um, I'm not sure on the format of that. Is it do we do V? Uh got to look at the PRs. It had no Don't think we prefix with a V or anything there. Okay. Snippet expander in it at one point oh one. I think we're good. See how that goes. Oh. Okay. Right, I need to do a little bit more testing before I actually PR that. Um so it's safe now. I can look at it later. 
um, it's telling me about it here. So eventually I'll be able to do a proper compare progress, fill in all the bits and bobs. Um, but for the time being, yeah, I might, might make that a draft when I do it. But anyway, uh, time has really run away from me. Now I've got stuff to go do. So um, I shall say goodbye. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, take care. Bye.